what can sport teach us about American society? What have you been taught about African Americans in sport in your schooling experience? Are Duke Scholar athletes simply assets to the university? Or are they real citizens of the university? How can we bring the joy of being in the classroom to Duke Scholar athletes and not just the pressure that comes with having to perform, whether it's on the football field or the basketball field? As a black student athlete, what does resistance look like to you? How far are you willing to go to achieve a hoop dream? I became involved in this project when I interviewed at Duke. I did a walking interview with Rachel Cranton. I reached out to Jen Nash and basically we pitched her this idea. And she took me by Cameron and she said, do you know what this is? And I said, it's Cameron. And <laughs> she said, are you a college sports fan? Of course I'm a college sports fan. And would she be interested in having a project on race and sports at Duke? and she was all in. During 2020, I can't breathe. there was this moment when it felt like the world stopped and noticed anti-black violence for the first time. And every institution that I'm a part of sent an email from Duke to Amazon to Ben and Jerry saying, this is the moment to reckon with anti-black violence. Justice. Now. Universities themselves were going to change and do better and, and, and move forward. I thought, how is Duke going to move forward unless we actually examine race and sports at Duke? Through this project, including classes, meetings with athletes, public events, we are trying to reckon with the history of race and sports at Duke and at universities. Some people compare the big time college sports system in the United States to the plantation system, call it a modern day form of slavery. And it's true. We have older white coaches making six, seven, eight, nine, ten million dollars a year. And we have young black athletes who are only getting paid the price of a scholarship. Steal by Williamson. You have a Zion Williamson, who an economist recently estimated earned $5 million for Duke in his year here because people tuned into Duke basketball to watch Zion Williamson. President Obama came to see, to watch Zion Williamson play. Slipping and injured is Zion Williamson. And break his shoe. Yet Zion Williamson got the price of a scholarship, which is something like $80,000 a year at Duke. Is that right? Yes, sir, baby. We here, baby. Yes, sir. So there's been this ongoing critique of thinking about the ways in which black athletes historically have been exploited for the benefit of all kinds of institutions. Athletes literally become a cash crop, black athletes. They're not just allowed to come to Duke to be students. They are in many ways employees of the university. They are working. The kinds of things that the average Duke student doesn't have. It's clear as day. It's clear as day that it's an exploitative system. Y'all better be on your game, y'all, I'm telling you. When we think about who's in control and whose labor is being used to generate these unimaginable amounts of money, if the ultimate goal is to make it to the professional league where you can hopefully garner a million dollar contract, million dollar payoffs, you have to make decisions all the way from your elementary school years on how you're navigating this system. Because in the middle is the intercollegiate athletic system. It literally dictates, in many ways, their educational experiences. They're full-time students expected to measure up to Duke's academic standards, but then they're also full-time athletes because even though the NCAA says there's a 20-hour limit on athletic participation for student athletes, the reality is that between film study, voluntary workouts, travel, and so forth, we have athletes at Duke who are spending 40, sometimes 50 hours a week on their sport. It becomes a major problem when student athletes graduate, even if they get a degree, but they don't have another skill set. Basketball, football, soccer, track and field is over. Baseball's over. But now what do you do? And I've seen many athletes struggle with identity, depression, drug addiction, alcohol, because they don't have anything else. Because once that ball stops bouncing, 
Who are they? Once your helmet comes off, who are you? And if you haven't thought about that, you're gonna be in trouble when you graduate or when you finish your schools. What do we want college sports to look like? What are college athletes' experiences, both inside and outside of the classroom, here at Duke and, and at other universities? How black athletes, past and present, have been treated, what their experiences are like, have they gotten the world-class education that they deserve as students at Duke? I think there's no better place than Duke University to do the work that I really want to do and hopefully make some changes to the system. Why do certain young people, but particularly black young people from around the world, have to think about sport as one of the few options that they have for upper social mobility or to have a decent, dignified life? Collegiate sports, historically, right, has been an avenue for African American men and African American women to be able to go on to college and go on to either professional careers in sports but most notably, right, professional careers outside of the sports arena. As an elite university in the South, with a top tier athletic program, what is Duke University's responsibility to the larger community of black and brown people who don't have the same kind of access to the university that these privileged students do? My grandfather was a janitor at the University of Texas at Austin, born in 1922 as a sharecropper only sixth grade education. Always wanted one of his kids to go to UT because he never could, because of racism, because of the year he was born. That was it. And I think Durham is a place just like that. I remember vividly watching sports on Saturday morning. My dad turns to me and he goes, why aren't there more black quarterbacks in the NFL? And I go, dad, well, we're, we're probably not good enough because the best players play, this is sport. It's a meritocracy. And I thought I was smart. And he looks at me real disappointed. And he goes, son, is that what you believe? And mind you, I'm seven or eight. And I asked him, I said, well, what do you mean? I was wrong? And he goes, yeah, you're wrong. We have more than enough capability to play quarterback, but they won't let us play. If you look at the athletes on Duke basketball, they're predominantly African-American. But if you look at the coaches across America, they're predominantly Caucasian. And I like to ask students to question that. Why is that? Why is it that sports play such an incredibly important role in university life and in Duke life, as an example, and how race interplays with that? Duke as an institution has a remarkable identity. And its identity is very strong on campus. The students are really spirited and the faculty are often very much engaged at being at Duke. And a lot of that does have to do with the sports and the success of the sports teams. But how the success of the sports and the people that are involved in the sports actually play out in the lives of the individuals and in the life of the institution. And it's not all pretty. It's not all good for everyone. My hope for the project is that so many institutions have said that they want to do right and that doing right is about reckoning with history. We want to take that seriously by putting something that's central to Duke's identity, which is college sports, squarely on the table for examination.